Brian Danielson versus Bandito. God damn, what a man. Holy crap. So the first half of this, this is not the AEW Brian Danielson lots of cut kicks, lots of elbows match, nor is it uh, the Bandito high flying lucha match. They had a technical grappling war. I thought I was watching Bloodsport for a while. It was beautiful. It was great. And the crowd's going crazy as they're just trading holds. And then Bandito, I, uh, uh, Excalibur had the name. I have not seen it before. But he does this, like he figure fours the legs. But then instead of like sitting back in a figure four, he grabs both hands and, 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 and curls Brian Danielson into the air. So it's like a hanging figure four leg lock thing. I don't know what the hell you call it. It was very, very impressive and looked absolutely brutal. And finally, uh, the, the dives get unleashed. Uh, we come back from break, and now Bandito's doing all his big high, big high spots. Uh, the, the, the uber-delayed suplex and the, uh, the, the, the moonsault body slam off the rope. And there was a point here where, where Danielson got the label lock, and I thought it might be the finish. But there's an epic battle. Bandito gets the ropes, and I was like, are these guys going to go an hour? Because they want to go an hour. I have no problem with them going an hour. They did not go an hour. They probably went another five minutes after that, but it was a great five minutes. Uh, Bandito keeps trying the 21-plex. Can't get it for the first two or three times. It finally gets it. They have, ironically here, on the precursor to Power Slap, they have a big-ass slap fight. And Bandito wins that, tries a suplex, but Danielson counters with a knee to the head, takes him to the mat. And then Bandito tries the got lift, but Danielson counters that with a Hurricane Rana, finally hits the knee strike and wins. Outstanding professional wrestling. Man, this was another one where, and actually it's weird because sometimes I, I uh, you know, you get your expectations built up and you're let down. Man, I heard nothing but praise for this match before I watched it. And then I watched it and it was like, this is like a hundred times better than I thought, even hearing what everybody had said. This was one of the best matches this dude ever had in AEW. Yeah. And uh, it was so great and it just kept going. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned this now, not only on multiple shows, but because of multiple opponents. People want these opponents to beat Brian Danielson. Mm. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> he has to beat all these guys in order to get a one-hour championship match with MJF. But the matches are so great, and the opponents are so good that, like, people are they they cheered. They 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 were chanting Bandito's name. And granted, you know they were in um, uh, where the hell were they? Fresno. Fresno? Yeah. So obviously you're going to get a, you know a degree of that, but you know they did it with uh, Takeshita too. Yeah. And they were not in in Japan; yes. they were in America. So these fans just love these guys, and like they would have been perfectly fine with Brian Danielson losing to either of these guys, yes. even though that would have totally fucked up the pay per view match. And uh, and this is another one. So uh, this this Tony Khan character in storyline. Let me get this straight. MJF has somehow convinced Tony Khan that the only way he's going to give Brian Danielson a championship match is if Danielson beats all of these guys for a straight month. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, like, you know, Tony Khan is giving him the toughest possible opponents. You know, Takeshita and Bandy. I guess it's well, not the toughest. I thought it, he's not giving him Jericho and Moxie and guys like that, but you know, it's he's like, like a very tough opponent. He's really trying to test this guy, this baby face Brian Danielson. Hey, let's start with Tony Nice. It would be in his best interest, yes, for him to face Tony Nice. Yeah. And uh, you know, whoever else. Brandon Cutler. Yes. Guys like that. But it said, man, Tony's making this guy work, and then next week he's got Brian Cage. Well, I was under the impression when MJF first issued this challenge. And it was like a 20-minute promo, so you may have gotten lost in the time there. But MJF would be the one picking Danielson's opponents. I don't think that was ever specified. Okay. I think in storyline, Tony is the one picking the opponents. Because, Well, I guess to later, uh, we, we hear from Danielson's next opponent. And it appears to be the first time that he and uh, MJF have ever interacted. So we'll see how that goes. But, uh, yeah, uh, Danielson is awesome. Bandito is awesome. And as we saw earlier, Takesh is awesome. And uh, he is doing an amazing job of getting these guys over by beating them. Or at least while beating them. And uh, it can't last forever. Takeshita especially needs to actually beat somebody at some point. He's like the, the best guy in the losing streak you ever saw. I know he has one matches on Dark. but uh you talking about Takeshita? Yeah. Well, the, his, his day is coming. Yeah. Old Don. Don's going to turn this thing around. That's true. That's true. 
Anyway, uh, go watch Bandito versus Brian Nielsen. It was brilliant. So MJF appears on the screen. He cuts a very serious promo. He notes that uh, you've been dealing with the masked Max. He likes to keep things light. He likes to keep things fun. But the closer we get to March 5th, the mask begins to slip off. And you call yourself the American Dragon. But not even a dragon is any match for the monster behind this mask. He mentioned he mentioned the the feedback last week. Not the actual feedback that we we read here on the show, but I, I mentioned it. Like last week was the week where all over the internet, on our board, on Twitter, like people all of a sudden they decided don't like this MJF character. Didn't like him running away and all this and that. And he acknowledged that. He said, you know, I I I hear I listen to the fans, you know, you fickle. You horrible, fickle fans, look at you. Now you think I don't deserve to be in this position? And so he is. he has shifted this character, which uh, I think I think is going to be for the better. But you know what? You know the other thing with MJF? This guy should wrestle more. I know that's, that's kind of part of the heat thing and everything like that, mm-hmm. but how long has this company been around? Uh, coming up on four years? Three years, four years, mm-hmm. whatever. We have never had a champion who didn't wrestle. <laughs> Yeah. And he actually had a—I uh, forget what his tweet was. Uh, it was—it was a tweet around uh, the end of the year, and it was basically—I can't remember what it was, but it was something like, you know, I, I had eight grueling matches this year. <laughs> 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 and uh, it was kind of like it, it, the the, tr- the tweet was funny, but then I thought about it. I was like, he did have like eight matches. Yeah, and. Uh, I think he needs to wrestle more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think he needs to wrestle and and uh, and just beat dudes. He's the we'll champion. We'll see. The champion should be wrestling more. He vowed in his initial championship promo to wrestle as infrequently as possible. Yeah, and, I know. And to bore the hell out of people. But I. But then it's it's the same thing. It's the same thing with like Danielson thing. Like Danielson needs to earn a shot at MJF by wrestling all of these horribly difficult opponents for a month. And meanwhile, why isn't this Tony Khan character going, bro, you're my champion. Like, I need a match out of you one of these days. Maybe once between now and the pay-per-view. One guy, maybe. I'll give you Brandon Cutler. Somebody. Wrestle somebody. I think he needs to wrestle more. But I, I did like this shift. But did you know that in January, WWE presents the Royal Rumble on the show will be what is being called a... Pitch black match. Why, you ask? Well, Mountain Dew apparently has a drink called Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And they got a lot of money. If it's all blacked out and nothing happens, we're actually the winners because, you know, we don't have to actually watch it. Jared, put a black thing on the screen here. It's It would be like if the match was like this for 10 minutes and all you heard was, oh, ow, boom. Oh. No, Mike. Stop it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.